Now, today, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about this topic, uh, leaving a good legacy. Remember that we are not living in this air forever. Well, maybe the Bible says 70 is the A for the human being, and those who are stronger live 80 or more. See, if the Lord not coming before, I would love to live here for 150 years old and running my bike. But if the Lord comes before that, I want to go with him. But the truth is that we all have expiration date in our lives. Yeah? And what's going to happen after that is except to ourselves. What will be the legacy that we want to give to the next generations? This is very important that we have to answer these questions to ourselves. Uh, that's why the question today is, what are I going to leave to those generations who come be, uh, after me? And let's say, make, let's make a, raise your hand. Who wants to answer, be the number one answer to me? The question will be, what is the most important that you're going to inherit to your kids or your son or your neighbor or someone who are after you? Let's see. Who wants to raise your hand? Otherwise, I will call your name. Remember, I am a teacher too. See? And I start calling those who are sitting in the back. Let's see. Who wants to answer that question? Okay. Oh, Rick, thank you for raising your hand. Okay, Rick. What would be that gift that you want to give to your child or someone else to know about you? Okay. Okay. What about you, Dave? Okay, two trombones. Okay, can I resume, uh, summarize this as you want to give your faith to them? Okay, is anybody else? Yes, yeah, Sonny. Oh, what do you want to give or inherit to your kids? Like somebody said, oh, I just have $2 million. I'm going to give you then uh, maybe half of my fortune to them. Oh, whatever you think is, is, is appropriate. Okay, your faith and love God, yes. Okay, the gift of prayer. Well, you are not the only one who, who answered this question. This is what most people answer when we ask in this question. Some people said, I'm going to give you to my kids a good education. Someone said, well, I don't have money, but I want to pay for a good education for my kids. And that will be my gift for the next generation. Some others said, okay, values. I want to give to them the, the love for hard work, the love for family, the love for, for the truth. And they uh, give the answer. Values, honesty, trust, ethical. And some other people said, you know, this is what I want to inherit to them. I want to inherit money because I have tons of money. I just give it to them. And some others says our faith. I believe that as a Christian, as a believer, faith should be our number one priority there. And then we can give anything else that we we can share with the new generations. And this, is, uh, uh, this week, I, I have the program for uh, the reading the Bible in one year. And every night, my family and I just gathered together and read the Bible. And we read the Bible from Genesis to Apocalypse through the year. We've been doing this for eight years. This is our eight year now. And we're reading in different, uh, in different uh, translations. And this week, we, we need to read uh, Chronicles. And we st I stopped there in Chronicles chapter 26, verse 3 and 5, because it's given me the, the idea that we need to share this to the congregation. And this particular Bible scripture said this, verse 3 says, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king 
of Judah. And he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jecolai. She was from Jerusalem. We see this kid today. I don't know, eight kids was here maybe? See? And all those going to 12th grade? Looks like they are in that range of age, 16 years old. Let's say that they have to uh, rule this country with that age, 16 years old. See, now you become the president of this country at 16 years old. But the most important thing here is that they were John. His, da his dad was dead now. And he has to take the position there. Now I have to rule this country, this kingdom. I have to rule this nation. I don't know if he feels prepared or not. But let's see what their parents did for him. Look what the next Bible verse says here. This, this is first, uh, 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 it's dying. And now let's see what the parents did. See, in this picture, we had a good family there. Every, every time that they have a dinner, say, let's pray. The, the kid before they get to the food, they stop there. Okay, how long is going to pray this? My food is going to get cold or what? And, and, they, and they, they say grace to the Lord. Say, this is a good thing that we can teach our kid to do. It's a be important to be a role model because the next two Bible births, Look what these people did to this kid. They say, he did what he was right. That means, he's talking about Josiah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father, a Messiah, has done. He saw God during, during the days, Zachary. He said, this, he saw God during the days of Zachary, who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he saw the Lord, God gave him success. This is important thing because I highlight two names there. One was Amas Amasiah and the other was Zachary, who take the time, the effort to teach this kid, Uzziah, how to fear and honor God. And because they do that, because they model to them, to him, fearing God, he did what was right. He became a good king. When you read the Chronicles, you see that it's a list of many kings. And some of them said, and this king do what is right, and he has success. And the other, you read another name of the other king, said, and he walked he walked back from the Lord, and he was destroyed. See, the, the basic of the success in our life is a good faith, a good love in the Lord. And Zachary and Amasai understood that. And they teach well Uzziah how to fear the Lord. And this is very important. And this is important to do it in the early stage in life. Maybe some people came to the Christian faith when they are adults, and they lost the opportunity to teach their kids since they were in uh, their baby's age. But never is too late. You always have a new opportunities with your grandson or the neighbors or someone and your friends. Because this is what the Bible says. This is important uh, to start in the early age to teach how to fear the Lord. It says, start, start children of the way, and they shall go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. This is important. Today we have the, the privilege to start something great in the new generation. It's just like Dave said today, just like a, a, a Tony answered, we want to give to them the love for the Lord, the love for the Scripture, the love for the church. This is important to show that. And the most important thing is showing by your doing not only teaching with your words, but also with our doing. When we decide to honor God with our deeds and also with our presence here in the church, 
We are teaching our kids. We are teaching our next generation and telling them that being in the house of the Lord is very important. That is something that cannot be avoided. It's something that we must do because it's the number one in our list. Honor our God, being in his house. Worship him with our voice and with our desires and with our deeds. We can spend our money buying Bibles. We can spend our money uh, redecorating our, our facilities and try to bring the kids. But if we are not model alive to them, those words can be fly away, fain, because they are not seeing a reality in our life. That's why uh, show by our doings is more important than showing by our words to our kids. A good example always goes beyond words. That. Do you hear that saying that uh, a picture speaks more than thousand words? Yeah, that's why our doings, what you're doing every single day, how you treat your wife, how you treat your husband, how you treat your kids, that is important. That is important because we are writing in their heart the love of God for others. And Second Timothy says, I am reminding of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandma Louis and his grandmother Eunice, and I am pursuing now live in you also. This is what I just say here. I got a grandmother, Louis, who had the opportunity not just to expel her kid, Timothy, so giving to Timothy everything that he wants, taking him to every fair as possible, but also it's a grandmother who takes the time to share her faith in Jesus. How many grandmothers we have here? How many grandfathers? We don't know, and I don't want to know now. Stepfathers, stepmothers, who have the opportunity by God, because this is important. God is giving us all those beautiful opportunities to share our faith. And Lois did it with his grandson. That later on in, the, in his studies, Paul recruited him to be a part of his apostolic thing. That is something important. When we see the sea in the heart of a new generation, we are making sure that the gospel and the faith in Christ continue after we are not here in this air. And that will be a good legacy. But not only Lois teach to Timothy, but also teach to her daughter, Eunice. Eunice, repeat the model. Do you see this? The sociologist says that there is a grand chance that the, that the children imitate their parents in every doing. If they are alcoholic or use drugs, there is a grand chance that the kids use drugs and, li and repeat the pattern. Well, it's not a great chance for us as a Christian, as a believer, to set those parents of faith in the heart of our kids. And they repeat the parents. See, the grandma teaching her daughter. Now her daughter is teaching his, her son, Timothy. If we're doing that, we make sure that our new generation will embrace the faith in Jesus this is what Paul says to the Philippians. It's, Whatever you have learned or received or hear from me or seeing in me, put into practice. This is again, Paul is not just stopping. Hey, remember every word that I just said to you. He does not say just that. He doesn't say, hey, remember every word that I said to you, you must do. He said, everything that you have learned, hear, and see must put in practice. Because it's not about listening to 1,501 sermons in our life. It's put in practice at least one of them would make the big difference in our life. And he said, put into practice. Remember what James said. 
Those who just hear the words of God and not put it in practice is like looking in the mirror. And then you go and you forget what it said, what you saw. That most important is to put in practice the word that you learn from God. It's, and the God of peace will be with you. I want God being with me in any circumstances in my life, every single day of my life. I want every single day when I wake up in the morning, I make sure that God is there. I just want to, to know what every time that I go into bed, just pray, and I know God is right there with me 24-7. But that is possible if I keep his word in my heart, doing it, and then... That will be, I become a good role model for my kids and for the kids of my kids for generation through generation until I depart from this life. That's why not only we have to keep our faith, but also it's important to do what uh, Eloise did. It was share her faith. I know you cannot read that little cartoon there, but uh, let me read it for you. It says, one of them says, I was just fine with the concept of sharing my faith until the pastor said we actually have to talk to people. See? Yeah, that's the time that happens. Oh, yes, great. That's perfect. Good sermon. We have to share the gospel. But when we know that we have actually have to do it, uh, sometimes we are not so, so happy about that. But we have a chance we have a chance to, to do it. We have a chance in our house. We have our kids right there. We don't have to go and knock a door on the neighbors. We have it right there in our home. We have the same opportunity in our job with the co-workers, with our friends. But we need to take the courage to do it. And we cannot do that if the Holy Spirit is not in us. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is there, but we don't realize that. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in everyone, each of one here. He said, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and you'll be my witness in Jerusalem, Samaria, and the all of the earth. And when we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit become and live in our heart. We got the power. We got the knowledge. Now we need to take action and teach to the new generations. That's why I'm talking to you about this today. Timothy says, Paul says to Timothy this, and the thing you have heard me say, the thing that you heard me say, and the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. And that words become alive to them. God wants you to teach others what you already know. He's not asking you to teach others what you don't know. Those secrets, if they can be secrets, but those words that you are not revealed to you yet. But he wants you to share what he already, what you already experienced in the Lord. Your forgiveness. The grace of the Lord, his goodness, his mercy. That's what we need to start sharing to others. And who can be better? Who can be better than our family and our friends to start sharing the gospel, leaving a great legacy in them? I'm not rushed to see my uh, tombstone. Uh, I'm not rushing for that, but I just want to say something there. He was a good man. He was a good father. He was a good Christian. He lived what he said. That would be awesome. Is there anybody recording this? And when you remember what I want to say in my tombstone? <laughs> but this is what I want to be remembered. That's the good legacy that I want to give to my to my new generations. Someone who lived what he's what he speak, someone who really loved the Lord with his deeds. And I believe everyone here who proclaimed to be a Christian, that should be one of those 
a special moment for us. What are I going to give to my new generations? Tony, you say today this Bible verse. Oh, Israel, the Lord God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This command that I give you today are to be in your heart. And I believe it's in your heart. Now, just like at those blood transfusions, it's the time for ourselves to transfer that love that is in our hearts, transfer into the heart of the new generations. And I always feel hope. Uh, I can say a, a per, I am a person with hope. When I see this kid here, I will say we are doing a good job in that. When I see Zion sitting there, I will say we are doing a great job in that. And we have to keep doing it because the time of God is coming soon. And that's what the Bible said. Look, verse 7 says, Impress then of your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as a symbol of your hands and be them of your foreheads. Fry them on the door friend of your houses and your gates. That means is that love for God has to be sensed in your house. When someone came to your house and opened the door and you say, Welcome to my house. The people who enter to your house say, Whoa, this house looks different. And they said how they treat one each other. Whoa, I feel like heaven. What is this? I've been alive? What? But they know that the people who live in that house, they are a truly Christian. Something different than the other friends who are not a believer, they can see the difference between that home and the other home. That which means have the word or the presence of, of God in our houses. That's why today Bible verse, and you're going to learn, uh, repeat it with me. You want to do that? Yes, let's do it. One, two, three. Whatever. I know that the experience of sharing the gospel sometimes is, uh, what can I say? This You can fear. Uh, some uh, fear. You can experience some fears. Insecure. Oh, should I do that? I don't know if I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't know if it is appropriate. I don't know how they're going to take it. But something that I will tell you today, if you feel that the Holy Spirit is telling you to share the gospel with certain people, don't hesitate. Let's do it. Because God always will be with you. They say, and the God of peace will be with you. When you take the lead, when you take the challenge to the next step and you start doing it, the Holy Spirit will release his power. And you will be a great speaker. You will become the voice of God in that moment. And remember, if you just you forgot, our mission here in this church is to be the feet the hands, and the voice of God. Let's do, do, let's do this uh, reality in our life, in our ministry. Be in the feet, be in the hands, and be in the voice of God. If we do that, we ensure that the next generation will keep their love for the Lord until he came back again. Amen. Let's pray.